The next generation of iPhone has been designed from the ground up. The iPhone 16 and 16 Pro are here, and I know it's easy to just grab a whole bunch of you know, official Apple accessories from the store, but over the last few years, I've been using a bunch of accessories, both Apple and from third parties. And so in this video, I wanna share with you my favorites that have stood the test of time, plus a few new products that I've discovered. I know I have good judgment, I know I have good taste. Now, the first accessory that most people go for with a new iPhone is a case, and we have millions and millions of different designs, different styles to choose from. But this year will be, I think, the fourth, maybe even the fifth year in a row where I'm sticking with a Magback case for my iPhone. Now, the reason why I have stuck with Magback for so, so long now, I literally have one for every single phone that I own that they make one for, is that, now yeah, of course, they do all the, the usual like drop protection stuff for those of you with butterfingers, like my wife, uh, things like raised edges to protect the screen and cameras, but they also have a genuinely useful feature of these additional magnets on the back, which means you can stick your phone to any metal surface, which sure, it sounds like a gimmick, but never, like never has a gimmick been used so many times every single day. Every morning whilst I'm at the gym, I stick my phone in front of me to check off my workouts, read messages, watch a video, and just not have to, you know, keep bending down each time to pick up and put down my phone from the floor between sets. Now a new one I've discovered with my new secret lab desk, which is all metal. I put my phone down and it sticks right where it is. There's no more like accidentally bumping it off with like an elbow or something like that. Sticking up in the kitchen whilst on a phone call or again, watching a video, keeping it all out of reach from little children that might be running around trying to grab your phone. Just genuinely like useful tech to have on a phone case. Like magnets are like my favorite thing about tech lately, especially when they're used in such a good way like these are. Now they do make a version for the iPhone 13 and upwards, as well as a bunch of like Android phones that I've used over the year. But this year for the iPhone, 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max and 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max, their new Elite cases add even more features. There is a finger loop in the back. There's a kickstand that again uses magnets to keep it in when it's not being used. It has uh, telescoping magnets on the back now, which just work better for uneven surfaces. And this little thing at the bottom, which I have to admit, I wasn't really a fan of to begin with, but it's actually really, really nice to rest your pinky on whilst you're using the phone. And as someone who never ever really plugged my phone into charge, it's nice to cover up the charging port to stop like fluff getting in. Plus it adds yet another layer of waterproofing to your phone. So you'd have to like dry it out before you then go and plug it into charge. It's also really, really grippy. It has a cutout for where the new camera control area is. And yeah, just as far as I'm concerned, it is a really, really nice upgrade to their previous versions. Now, one thing I will say is that as someone who has been using the Elite case and been trialing it for a couple of months before they released it, I would personally recommend you pick up the black case because the white just really doesn't hold up well over that time. But again, that's not really any different to any white case I've seen before. It just it's just white, it just happens. Oh, and a couple of things I totally forgot about. You can swap out the colors for various parts of the phone, like the buttons, the grip, the camera ring, if you like that sort of thing. And the Elite case comes with a really simple and really easy way to fit a screen protector, which now just, just one thing. I applied my screen protector and it had some like air bubbles in it. They told me that the bubbles would magically disappear after a few days and I kind of went, well, yeah, right. And then a few days later they did actually vanish. So um, yeah, if you do get this and hate that you've got air bubbles in it, just do give it some time and they they should go because that's been my experience of applying two of these now on two different phones. And because I have spent a lot of money over the past few years buying these cases for every single phone that I own, I did actually nag Mag back to see if they'd be interested in sponsoring this video, which they did, thank you. And you can grab a 15% discount on any Magback products using the link down below. So as far as the headphones go with the iPhone, now on one hand, you can get kind of whatever headphones you want since, well, Bluetooth headphones are Bluetooth headphones. But to get all of the latest features like the, the new like nod and shake gestures, like voice isolation, even turning them into hearing aids, which is a new coming feature, then you need AirPods. And whilst you could pick up a pair of the new AirPod 4s, my recommendation still would be to actually pick up a pair of AirPod Pro 2s, but from places like Amazon. Like if you wait, they're sometimes discounted to almost the same price as the new AirPod 4s with the noise cancellation on them. Now, I actually prefer using the Beat Fit Pros instead, mainly because none of the AirPods 
actually stay in my ears when I'm doing anything you know, but sitting still. But one thing you can do is you can swap out the standard silicon ear tips with these, uh, these memory phone ear tips instead. Now, it doesn't fix the problem altogether for me, but I've seen a like a lot of people recommend these in the comments of my previous videos and they they do stay in better for me uh, they're also more comfortable and they're very affordable as well so it's well worth giving them a try so i will uh, i'll link down below on where to pick these up along with everything else i mentioned in this video but yeah if you are struggling with you know, your airpods staying in your ears and you don't want to have to buy a whole other pair of earbuds earpods like i have done for working out then definitely check out these ear tips first for sure but for over the ear headphones apple really like really dropped the ball this year with their AirPod Maxes, but this year just got updated with USB-C, like no other features, not even the latest H2 chips that the latest AirPods have. And for $550 or pounds, that is insane for a set of headphones. Now my go-to for over the ear headphones are now the Sonos Aces, really, really comfortable to wear. They also come with a little magnetic pouch inside for like other cables or adapters you wanna carry with you. And they sound to me at least, just as good, if not better, than the AirPod Maxes, and at a slightly, slightly more affordable price than the Maxes too. Now, next up is the wallet. Now, I will say that I'm not someone who uses a wallet that often because, well, I just use Apple Pay. But when I am going abroad, I always grab a wallet. There's always just that one hotel that needs like a, a physical card to check you in. Now I've tried using the Apple wallet, but it can only fit three cards in. I've tried the very, very expensive Ridge wallet and found it really, really painful to sit on for one. And even with the MagSafe like adapter added onto it, it slips off like far too easily. Although I did come across a friend of mine who owns one who just like seems to collect cards, just absolutely crazy the number of cards you can fit in those. But then I realized that Mag Back also makes a wallet. Now this isn't some like I'm in love with Magback video, but um, it fits plenty of cards in my wallet. I think it says officially up to nine cards or so, but um, over time, as with well, anything leather, you might even be able to fit more than that in there if you really want to you know, cram cards in. Now it also has a built-in RFID shielding and like their case, my favorite thing, magnets. Super, super strong magnets so that it doesn't accidentally fall off your phone. And so strong, in fact, you can literally spin the phone with the finger loop without it coming off, which I'm just surprised at every single time I do that. And also, even with the wallet on the back of the phone, it still has outward facing magnets. So you can still stick your phone to things, even with the wallet attached, which is pretty cool. Okay, so case, wallets, headphones all done now. Charging is up next. Now, I have quite a few different chargers for different situations. So I'm actually gonna spread these throughout the video rather than like, bore you with back-to-back -back charging accessories for one whole section. But first things first, pointing out the potentially obvious, depending on your experience, with the new iPhone 16s this year, they now support faster wireless charging up to 25 watts, I believe, which in typical Apple fashion is only achievable if you use the official Apple MagSafe charger. So yeah, if you want the, the fastest wireless charging speeds possible, then get that because literally all other chargers, even the latest Qi 2 chargers, max out at 15 watts. Now, in terms of wire charging, there's also been a bump up this year to 45 watts, which is up from 27 watts from last year's iPhone 15 models. Now, Ugreen have always been a firm favorite of mine. And so these portable battery packs are really, really great just to carry around with you in your bag. You get the smaller one here, which gives you around two and a half full charges for the iPhone 16 Pro Max, or you get like three and a third charges for the iPhone 16, the base model. It charges up to 100 watts. So there's plenty of capacity there for the iPhone and another device with one USB-C and one USB-A port on the top and with a really, really easy to see display to show you how much charge is left as well. Now the higher one gives you around four and a bit full charges for the iPhone Pro Max and over five and a half charges for the iPhone 16. Now this one is 130 watts max with two USB-C ports, one USB-A port, and with, again, a digital screen that gives you a little bit more information showing you the percent as well as how long it has left to charge and the actual wattage that it's providing to each device as well. Also, whilst we're on the topic of Ugreen, there's this kind of like portable travel wireless charger here. So it basically folds out into a desktop stand uh, charger. So obviously you can attach your um, kind of MagSafe uh, iPhone or any other phone with a MagSafe case on it. And then there's, there's also a little tray behind it as well where you can put your, um, you know, charge your AirPods at the same time. Uh, there's no, it's not like no built-in battery. So you just plug it in via USB-C, but it's just nice that you can, yeah, you can fold it away, excuse the, the, the noise, and then, you know, throw it in your bag and then take it with you whilst you're traveling. Pretty neat. Now I'm also gonna throw this one out there as well because I picked it up recently. Now I always used to struggle when I was sat at my desk 
to charge my devices. Like I'd plug it into my dock and then get messages saying it's drawing too much power or I'd be hunting around for a charger to plug in. So I picked up this new anchored desktop charger. I can't remember the name of it and it is freaking awesome. So there's 250 watts max across the six ports. So you've got four USB-C on the front and then two USB-A on the side. And there's like a, a really slick digital display to show you what each device is drawing. Now you can even set priorities on certain ports. So if there's too much plugged in, it will then prioritize, you know, the one or two devices that you want to prioritize. It even has Wi-Fi and can be used as a digital clock whilst on your desk. Like this thing has just become a permanent addition to my desk setup now. I think my only wish is that it had some ports on the back of it so I can tuck away some of the cables. But genuinely, like other than that, this, this is really, really nice. Now, as far as watches go with the iPhone, most people will either go with the new Apple Watch like Series 10 or maybe an Ultra 2. Now, there's not really much I can say about those. Just find the one that fits your budgets. Now, I do go with the Ultra 2, but I am considering downsizing to the smaller Series 10 this year just for the size and the comfort. But what I would say is that if you are in the UK, you can actually get a it's practically free Apple Watch when signing up for health insurance through Vitality. And all you have to do is do like 30 minutes worth of exercise five times a week. So I'm going to leave a link down below. It's actually my affiliate link because I've actually been on Vitality for eight years. I think something like that. And that will also get you £100 cash back when signing up for you know something like a you know, £50 a month for health insurance. Plus, I get like, free coffees, cinema tickets, uh, discounts at Samsung and Garmin, just all sorts of places. Genuinely, like another thing that's well, well worth it. But if you don't want an Apple Watch, I've actually been using a Garmin watch for the past, literally like the past year or so. And if you are into like your health and your fitness, it is definitely, definitely worth checking out. Plus a bonus is that it works across iPhone and Android. So if you are ever kind of considering changing, you aren't forced to buy a whole new watch all over again. Now, most of these Garmin watches get you significantly better battery life than an Apple Watch. Like some of them can go over a month without charging, which is pretty insane nowadays. You also get better health, better fitness tracking via the Garmin app that you can use. Also better integration with apps like Strava if you want to you know, log and share all your fitness activities. And whilst it's not a computer on your wrist in the same way that an Apple Watch is, if you really are like prioritizing your health and fitness right now, then they are well, well worth checking out. Well, 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 well worth checking out. Uh, now, last year, I recommended the Backbone gaming controller really because it was really the only one that was you know half decent. But this year, I've actually picked up a new controller from a company called GameSir, and it is just so much nicer to use. Now, firstly, it actually has some meat on the controller to like grip onto and actually use. Feels much more like a like an Xbox controller in your hands. Now, it also has Hall Effect joysticks, which means zero stick drift over time. Now, this is huge for those of you who get frustrated after their controllers, you know, start to drift over time. And those joysticks are hot swappable with others that come included in the box. You literally just take this top cover off, pops off magnetically, and you can literally just then pull off and then swap over the joysticks that you want to use. Pop that new joystick on the top there and then reattach the cover with magnets to keep it secure. Also, the USB-C port on this flexes, so you don't risk ruining your phone's like USB-C port when moving in, moving out of the controller. And there are also rear buttons, like we're seeing on uh, you know lots of the latest generation uh, PC and Xbox controllers right now. Also works uh, great in Call of Duty, amongst other games, and it just really, really improves your gameplay experience. And given that Fortnite on my Nintendo Switch is locked to a totally different account than what I use on my actual console, this, this is a really, really nice alternative if only the Epic Game Store was actually available here in the UK. God damn, like leaving the EU. But it does work great on my S24 Ultra, so I have that. But at least for now, this is something that would come with me on holiday as it's just so much fun and just so convenient just to throw into my bag instead of a separate games console. Now, speaking of travel, one thing that annoys the heck out of me is trying to load up my phone with you know, a bunch of content before I go. And this, this is a really, really handy like travel hack, handy tip thing. But if you grab a USB-C dongle, now I've got a few different ones around, but whatever I've got, but plug that into your phone and then hardwire that into your internet at home. And now you can download your favorite apps, games, movies, TV shows, whatever it is, in a fraction of the time that it takes to do over Wi-Fi. Like I use this all the time on my kids' iPads before we go away, because I can literally just sit there and blast through like one child's iPad, the other child's iPad, my iPhone, my wife's iPhone, and it just really speeds up the whole process. And of course, if you then want to, you can hook the dongle up to other USB devices, uh, keyboards, monitors, uh, SSDs, SD cards, whatever you need. 
Right, so there is this new accessory from uh, Anchor, which has just been released. Uh, and this is, I'm not sure the product name, I'll link it down below, but this is like a MagSafe, so it magnetically attaches to the back of your iPhone. Uh, and with a USB-C cable with a like a, a 90 degree angle bend on it. So it's really, really nice way of having extra storage for your iPhone because this little magnetic thing kind of pops off. And you can then fit like an SD card uh, and a micro SD card into the back of this little kind of magnetic thing. And use it as a really nice way of adding extra storage to your iPhone without, you know, paying Apple's like excessively uh, high fees for like adding more storage to your iPhone. Um, now, this isn't a way of being able to record like ProRes RAW, really high quality to an SD card directly, just because this is not fast enough uh, to write, you still need an SSD for that. However, speaking of Mac back earlier today, this is something I came across last year. Their wallet is really, really conveniently sized to put, this is a T7 uh, SSD, and you can put a T7 SSD in their wallet and then use a really, really short like micro, um, uh, sorry, USB-C cable, attach it to the back of your phone, and then plug it into your phone. And literally, like that's a great way of being able to shoot ProRes RAW, uh, maybe not on this phone, because this is an iPhone 16, but on the 16 Pro and Pro Max models, you could use that to shoot the uh, like much, much higher quality, uh, like log footage straight to an SSD. So yeah, really, really nice little uh, kind of hack there with the uh, the Magback wallets there. Oh, and also, even if you don't want to use the whole wallet accessory, Magback give you these um, extra like separate magnets, which you can just put anywhere around your house. And you could literally stick these directly to like the SSD and then stick those directly to the back of your Magback case. Uh, so if you don't want to have the whole like wallet thing for some reason. Okay, so a few more charges now and I'll keep this relatively short. Now in my car, even though it's like a super expensive Porsche electric car that has a car charger like in the armrest. And if you put your phone in there, it's a wireless, uh, wireless phone charger, your phone overheats and gets too hot. So it's a bit stupid. So ESR sent me this charger for another video that we've already posted on the channel. And now I use it literally all the time in my car. So it gives me fast charging whilst I'm driving my car. It also gives me like a really fast and like just convenient way to just quickly top up your phone's battery whilst, you know, hop in, hop out the car or doing quick journeys. And I also love that this charger has, I think it's called a cryo boost technology. It's, it's basically got a fan in the back. You can actually feel at the back here that's uh, keeping your phone cool whilst it charges. I'd, I've had quite a few other phone chargers where whilst they're charging, the phone itself and the charger gets quite warm. So it either slows down the charging or just stops charging altogether and waits for the phone to cool down. And this charger doesn't do that at all. Oh, and it's also fast enough to charge it up to 100%, even with like music and maps and like all sorts of other things going on on the phone. So love that it's fast charging. It gives you those uh, 15 watt max fast charging that's, you know, not Apple's fastest fast charging, but basically every third party's fast, fast charging. But again, plenty fast enough to keep charging whilst you're driving around. And also the same for the desktop ESR charger. You've got uh, Qi 2 MagSafe wireless charging, so up to 15 watts. There's an Apple Watch charger on the back. So again, I can top up my watch when I'm sat at my desk. Uh, you can spin the iPhone around for that little, you know, clock mode thing. And you can also charge your AirPods underneath, which are also magnetized. So you don't have to then sit there and like, find the sweet spot for charging, just throw them down there and they just snap perfectly into place. Oh, and also this one's from Anchor, but if you don't want one of those bigger Ugreen chargers in your bag, then I usually carry around one of these in my pocket if I know I'm just gonna need like a single top up charge during the day. But that is it as far as battery stuff goes. Okay, so this is actually my favorite accessory probably of the entire year. Now, firstly, great pair of sunglasses. Secondly, I think they are probably the very first AI powered smart gadget that actually like actually gets it right because having these on means that I just don't need to keep my phone out all the time. I can literally keep the phone in my pockets and then it just reads out WhatsApp messages, reads out iMessages, uh, reads out uh, phone calls that are calling me and I can literally just reply with my voice to those people. For example, message on WhatsApp from Hudson saying, hey Pete, where are you? Hey Meta, take a photo and send it to Hudson on WhatsApp. Send photo to Hudson Warren. Yeah. Sending photo. And if you are actually lucky enough to live in the US, there are some like actual AI features you can actually use, like, you know, holding up a book in front of you and saying, hey Meta, can you summarize this book for me? Or tell me a fun fact about this building I'm looking at. Unfortunately, outside of the US, we don't get any of that and it's actually been like a year since i bought these and we still haven't got those features which 
a bit frustrating, but that aside, still one of the best purchases I have made for the entire year. Now, next up is this little guy, which is actually a MagSafe holder for your iPhone. And then you can use this to mount your iPhone above your MacBook screen to then use it as a webcam for your calls because it is so much better than using the built-in camera. Now for desktop, I actually tend to use my Insta360 Link camera since that's been pretty awesome over the years. But yeah, for MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, this is a really solid option. Just don't tilt your screen back that far because just the weight of this will just pull your screen over even further. And then the awards for probably the most overkill, but so very awesome, are these charging cables from a brand called uh, Aohi, A-O-H-I, Aohi, I think. Now they make a few different variations of these cables, but this one was from their future or the future cable set, which funnily enough, including a lightning cable, which is now no longer needed. But all of these cables support uh, super fast, like 240 watt charging speeds, as well as fast data transfer speeds, 8K video, and you know, all of that good stuff. Now they come in these different sections, which you can detach and reattach, so you can have them as short or as long as you need them to be. And I also love that they are bright yellows, just so you can, you know, you can't misplace these cables like ever. You'll never leave them behind by mistake. And the LEDs also light up on them, so you know how fast the device is charging. You've got uh, green for trickle charging, blue for normal charging, and then yellow for fast charging. So which one is your favorite iPhone accessory? Maybe did I miss anything? Let me know down in the comments down below. Please do subscribe. I'm gonna be posting my iPhone 16 review very soon after I've spent some time with my own phone. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, bye-bye.